Welcome to my submission for CS50's introduction to game programming. This is the Pokemon assignment. So we're just going to run that now. So this update um, revolves around uh, displaying the stats when we level up. So what I've done, I've modified the take turn state lure file, so um, when we defeat the first Pokemon, our experience will just shoot through the roof because I've multiplied it by a thousand. So for the demo, we don't have to fight about three or four Pokemon to get this to sort of display. So, here's an interaction now. So there we go, we've just defeated the Pokemon. You've earned loads of experience points. And here's the stats that show. So it shows the initial HP there, um, what we gained, and that would be 17. The attack we've increased by 1, defense by 2, and speed by 2 as well. Uh, that is pretty much it. That is the uh, update. Display the stats for leveling up. So before I go over the code for this assignment, there is a, a little error in the code that was provided to us, and that is if uh, you flee from a battle but quickly press enter on a battle message state. And the battle message state, if it doesn't require user input, so for example, you know, when you gain experience, you press enter to skip the dialogue. If you don't require user input and it goes away by itself, but you quickly interrupt it with an enter, it can cause an error in the program. I'll show you now. Let's try and get a um, an interaction here. Here we go. So a wild Agnite has appeared. Go and a leaf. So when I press run, but keep pressing enter, it actually pops the game off the stack itself, and now we just have a black screen. Ordinarily, you would just have an error here with the blue background, but um, I'll show you why that's not the case right now. So in the code here. Uh, in the state stack lure here, I've just put a sanity check because when you update a state stack, same if you pop one really as well, you should just check that you actually have a state to do some logic to. That's just a sanity check in there and that's why I have a black background because the state stack is you know, absolutely empty and it, it will only let you update one if you have a state on the stack. So that's why I have a background, a black background and you probably have a light blue one with a, with a love 2D error. Now the actual error here, here's an example right here. So this is in the battle menu state. So when you're actually running away from a fight, it does some logic here and then it pus pushes a battle message state here, which requires no user interaction here. And there's just an anonymous kind of function here uh, to satisfy the uh, function of the state. So what it does, it just says you fled successfully and it relies on you just waiting for this message to go away. Uh, after half a second this timer does some logic here and we go back to the game however we're interrupting this because we're pressing enter within 0.5 seconds and so inside battle message state it's actually trying to pop itself off right here but also after the timer here it's trying to pop some more stuff too and what's happening is it's just popping off one more state than it needs to now the underlying principle of this is when you actually pop states, they should be referenced really. These are just kind of anonymous pops. When we're actually pushing it on, we're pushing like a battle message state, but it should have some sort of reference or something. So we're pushing um, a battle message state onto the stack. It should have a reference that said something like fled state or something like that. So when we come to pop it off, we just say pop brackets fled state. Then what that would do is say, um, when you go to pop this off, which is this function here, it should just say, oh, um, do we have a fled state on our stack? If so, pop it off. If we don't, then don't do it at all. But as it is now, these are all anonymous, so we don't know what we're popping off. We're just hoping that the one we expect to be on, stop it, uh, on top of the stack is there, and it's not. So that's what's causing the problem here. 
in a real world you wouldn't really have this situation where you're just anonymously popping off states and hoping it's the right one you'd reference them in some way that's the underlying problem anyway to get around this um, just remove the timer really probably or if you really don't want to do that just make this interval really 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 tiny so you can't possibly press enter in that time that's a quick dirty fix but as I mentioned I've you know I've covered the underlying principle of why this is happening and that should be the go-to in order to fix this so now we've covered a, a problem with the code that was provided to us I'll, I'll go through the uh, assignment itself it's a very quick assignment and it's just a display a stats menu uh, when you've you know leveled up and uh, one thing I'm gonna say first is in the take turn state I've multiplied this whole value by a thousand so that just means once we defeat our first Pokemon, we get a ridiculous amount of XP, and we instantly level up. So it improves your, you know, the speed of your testing. You don't have to defeat three or four Pokemon just to try your code. So that's something I put in there first. I highly recommend it. So um, the first thing we're gonna go in menu, menu Lua here. So what I've done here, I've added a value in here, just calls has cursor. So that, uh, when we actually define a menu, we want to say, does our menu have a cursor? And that's the little thumb, you know, that goes up and down when you change from fight to flee. But because we're now reusing this menu into sort of like an interface to show stats, it has no user interaction, so it would have no cursor. So in, in the menu Lua, I've just put a sort of definition here, which gets fed into the selection Lua here. It just says, has cursor, that's all. In the selection lure, this is where we sort of utilize that incoming parameter there. So what I've done here, I've just said if the incoming cursor is nil, so you know, um, if we're creating a menu where we fight or flee, we haven't defined a cursor um, because I don't want to break the existing code. So every instance where our menu could be called, we don't want to just change that and say, oh, cursor is false. Uh, sorry, cursor is true, cursor is true, cursor is true. So instead, I just said, well, if the cursor is nil, then just default it to true. So if you don't specify a cursor, it, it, there's always going to be a cursor. However, if the cursor is defined, then we just want to set it to the value which is incoming into our selection. And again, that's passed through the menu. So in, that's, that's pretty simple. So in the um, update right here, I just say, oh, um, if our cursor is true, so self.has cursor, that just means is it true, then do all the logic, and that's where we can sort of, you know, um, detect whether the user pressed up, down, or return. So I've literally just added this statement right here. Uh, and in the render, so we're actually rendering the cursor part here, <coughs> the only thing I've added is this right here. So you can see in the comment it says draw the selection marker well if we don't have a cursor we don't we don't want to draw that little cursor hand uh, so that, that's it that's the only change in order to modify the menu to handle um, the non-cursor sort of input uh, for the stats um, it, it's a lot easier to edit the take turn state right here and just add in a menu just shove it in there but you know the code given to us it has a, a file for each state it, it seems pretty crude just to jam in a menu call here so what I did I just created my own state it just seems to flow with the with the program giving to us I don't want to just jam things in there you know hack them in there to make it look good uh, sorry not look good but work so I just created a whole new file stats menu state so in the dependencies Lua, I've added the uh, sort of line in there to include that into the project, so that's important. And this is the whole new file that um, you know evolves around our stats. So it's, it's all contained, you know, it's cohesive, loosely coupled, just like obje object oriented program. And in here, it's it's almost like the other menu, just slightly different. So so what it does in the init here, it's got a, a function call. So when the stats window closes, it, it calls the function you, you sort of pass it in. We've seen that throughout this project. And in the stats menu itself, I'm putting it in the middle of the screen, minus you know 100. So it's sort of somewhat centered. Uh, this is the width of it. Uh, I played around with these figures just based on you know when you have your HP and attack, how it looks good on the screen. The, these work for me. 
I've initialized the cursor as false and again this will get passed through your menu and selection files I've just discussed that so every time we have a stats menu state it's always false it doesn't have a cursor and the items in there very easy HP attack defense speed and these come in here um, you can see stats that's our kind of incoming variable here and that has the values old HP HP increase and also a reference to the player Pokemon which takes in the new HP attack defense and speed um, in the update here um, this is to make the dialogue go away so if we press space enter or return which seems to be used around the program to make dialogues disappear so I've just used that to keep it you know consistent I'm just gonna pop it off the stack and then uh, uh, call the on close function here so again this is the function that's passed in and we just want to call it when it's popped off you don't have to pass the function, it's really up to you, but it just follows the logic of the program and keeps everything consistent. So that's the stats menu state, that's everything to do with the stats. Then the take turn state, this is where we actually call the menu and, and, and show it. That's it. So what we do, we have to store, well we don't have to, but I've chose to, store the old stats before we level up. So I'm just taking in the player Pokemon HP to uh, attack, defense, and speed, and just storing it in these variables. You could reverse the logic of leveling up, but it's just easier to store them first. Um, this was this line here, just this highlighted part here, but I've added the return here because this function returns four variables, so I've just um, initialized them right here. So, and that's the actual increase of HP, attack, defense, so that's what it's increased by. So now we have the old values we have the increase and after calling this function they are increased so then after this function call these will contain the new values so we have the old ones here the new ones here after this is called and the increase itself so we have everything we need uh, to call a stats window and what we're doing we're uh, setting these in self which is this uh, Lua file right here so we're pushing everything into self and in our stats menu state uh, Lua which I've just covered we're just passing in self so now the stats menu state will know everything about our current self and that will now be referenced to stats in stats menu state so it's pretty easy if you followed the course on this far and um, again our stats menu state as I said it um, takes in a function as a parameter which is on close so here this all is our on close function so this is an anonymous function which is represented by on close inside this file so when we press space enter or return so the dialog closes and this functionality is called and what we're doing we're pushing a battle message state onto the stack that just says congratulations level up and that displays after our stats window and fade out to white so that is pretty much everything to display the stats window with the stats, how to get the stats in a nice loosely coupled file away from it, and also at the start we just talked about the error that was um, yeah, provided to us, unfortunately, but yeah, now you know sort of more how it works and how you can sort of prevent it if you create your own RPG, for example. But that's how to do this assignment, uh, really easy. Um, it should be a lot easier than the Zelda one anyway. That was, uh, yeah, definitely quite a mouthful this one in comparison a lot easier so uh, yeah thanks for watching i uh, hope this helped you out